Ja, vi är er framdeles i Irland. Uh, I dag är er vi ute på en uh, biffarm, uh, rätt och slett. Här produceras det tonnevis med biff. Går ut över i hela Europa. Bak mig här så står Jerry. Ska ta en liten prat med han så ska han fortælla allt om hur detta här systemet fungerar. Jerry. Good, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to sunny Ireland. It's nice it's, to be here. It is, it's like this always. It's like this always. always yes, yes. yes. I've been here a couple of times and you're not telling the truth now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, Jerry, uh, thanks for having us. You That's have been uh, guiding us uh, a few days now. Yes, okay. Um, yesterday we talked to your son, uh, Carl. Yes. Um, you were the one of the founders of Farm Tour Island. Correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and today we are in a beautiful scenery. Yep. Uh, where exactly are we? Yeah, we're on the east coast and we're just almost midway. Uh, uh, the, every area has t- townlands. This is the townland of Ballygas. And so we're midway between the small towns of Drogheda, Dundalk, but uh, the bigger the bigger cities then are Be- Belfast and Dublin. Belfast to our north and Dublin to our south. And almost mi- midpoint on that. Midpoint, so yeah. just on the coast, we're only 500 meters from the from the east coast. Um, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, historical area. We have lots of influence here in this in this area from the Vikings. Yes, yes we Nor- talked a bit yeah, about that. We spoke that. about that yeah. earlier. The Norwegians were the good ones that came, and we liked Norwegian and. Uh, but then the Danish Vikings came and they were the baddies anyway. So yeah. anyway, but that's for another story. That's that's yeah. history. Yeah, but, but, wanna, but wanna... it happened here in this area. Yes, yes, yeah. we're just yeah. here at the point of, of uh, Lindukal. It's very, very famous. Yeah. And on um, through fortunes of, of change, um, this was where the first um, Viking uh, came. Uh, and um, 60 kilometers further on, they also landed at the same time in, in a, a small little insignificant area. And it's, it, um, this is Lindukal and this was uh, Dublin, and yeah. now it's become the city of Dublin. The and now we have only 500 people here, and we have uh, 1 million people there. Yeah. So. And today, Jerry, uh, we're at the bee farm. Yes. Uh, yes. We have traveled around Ireland looking at the dairy farms. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, we're very lucky with the weather, so we have been yep. uh, having a nice trip. But yep. uh, this farm, Jerry, uh, tell us a little bit about the setup here. Yeah, th- th- this would be typical of what we'll see in, in Ireland is, is that um, we have a very distinct, uh, our, our beef industry is very, very, very dynamic from the production of the slaughtering facilities and everything, all privately owned slaughtering plants. And they're all based along the east coast. Why is that? It, it's because uh, traditionally all the animals would have moved from the west, high rainfall, poor land, small farms, would have come to east for, for finishing or for preparation for, for slaughter or for back before we, we uh, in, in, uh, up, to, up to about 1975, uh, they would have been all moved live across to Britain. Yeah. So, so, so it's a traditional it's system a, a traditional to moving system, all yeah, the animals yeah, to the east. And we have lots of poems about to meet of the pasture from wet hills by the sea, to Leitrim and Longford, go my cattle and me. There's many, many poems and yeah. poetry about moving of cattle. And the drover person was the, the person who moved the, cat, moved the animals. They would have been a very, very important part of um, of Irish social and uh, economic history from the from the movement of cattle. They would have been a very highly respected profession, a drover. You know, yeah. now they don't exist anymore. No, but yeah. that's the equal to a cowboy, cowboy in America. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And, the dro- and the drover, yes, those same guys. That's why we have in in parts of Argentina. You know, you go there. There's yeah. still people speaking with with Irish accents because yeah. they left. Um, through uh, at the time of a famine went to Argentina. That's where the cowboys in parts of America would have Irish names. So it would have been that that that, that very lofty profession of drovers. And so anyway, moving to you <laughs> to a question you asked me, why here this farm would then why they would have moved east because this is where uh, crops would be grown. This is where better quality forage would be, would be produced traditionally. So the old tradition of, of barley feeding uh, and finishing animals. Mm-hmm. Also, there was lots of this, um, small distilleries, small breweries in this area. So byproducts from yeah. the distilling and brewing industry would have would have traditionally been used as as, as animal feed. And uh, this wouldn't have, this wasn't a big dairy area. Uh, not, not a lot of dairy production, but uh, that would be more in the south 
southern part of the country, mm. way down south in the uh, Munster province of Cork. That's where, and that's where we still have 40% of our cows yeah. are produced and are, 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 are accommodated there. But here, yeah, uh, for that reason, then in the early 70s, we would have had, particularly after, after um, uh, joining the EU, we would have had a surge in, in farms like this developing. Yeah. So uh, th this is uh, uh, owned by a family farm. It's owned by a, by a, by a gentleman called Joseph O'Reilly. And Joseph has, um, uh, this will be at least third or fourth generation on this farm. Mm. Um, it's a little bit bigger than it was then. It's, it's now 400 hectares. And of that 400 hectares, about 120 hectares in grass. And the, the balance then is, is in crop growing. Oh. So they're growing barley, wheat, oats, oil seeds and then small amount of maize uh, for, for forage uh, and all that then will go in through uh, the cattle. The cattle then are, are the, the grassland is, is generally summer grazing mm -hmm. with some small proportion of that uh, harvested for as, as grass silage and then the balance then uh, or the balance of the land then is the, the barley and the wheat and the oats are used for, for, ca for cattle feed for, for the winter. And we talked a little about uh, a little bit about it earlier when we when we arrived at the yes, farm. Yes. Uh, you have a completely different system. You have the steers, you have the heifers, you yeah. have the bulls, you have yeah. the cows, and yes. they are going in quite different directions. Yeah, yeah. Well, well I suppose that, yeah, the the the, the, it, 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 the, the market uh, or the, the production systems in Ireland are. I've been to Norway many many times, so they are different. Um, Similar but but different than here, uh, but uh, not not so much in the breed, but more in, in where we because we're orientated towards export in Ireland. We've eighty four percent of our beef is, is exported primarily, uh, um, and then we so then we have two sectors within the beef industry. We have the, the dairy bred animals, and then we have the beef bred animals. Um, up until um, uh, two thousand and fifteen, when uh, EU subsidies were abolished, the vast majority of, of our beef was from 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 beef cows. So suckler cows, we call those, mm -hmm. uh, uh, mother cows in Germany, but but um, uh, but they've, they're in decline yeah. because the numbers of dairy cows have gone from one million dairy cows up to one point six million. Yeah. So the byproduct of the dairy industry now is 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 is, is becoming um, is a lower lower quality from some respects, but mm. but it but it's becoming in a very very important part of our industry. And they've been de we have lots of breeding programs around using cross breeding those with with mainly. Sh um, uh, Angus and Hereford, and they're finding a very, very good market. Yeah. Primarily, uh, again, as steers and heifers, uh, all that will be. Uh, but we then have our uh, beef herd, and small proportion of those, the males, are, are going for bulls, yeah. uh, but the vast majority are for steer beef. Uh, and, a, and a steer, that's a bull who's castrated. A bull castrated. who's castrated, yeah. and generally castrated at the at, at the four to six months of yeah. age, anyhow, so that, that, that's what they will be. And when we look at, at those animals here, Jerry, uh, we see all the green grass. Yeah, uh, yeah. There is a saying, grass-fed beef. Grass, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that, we, we, have, we have then two very distinct production systems in Ireland. We have, we have the grass-fed animal and then we have the housed animal. Uh, yeah, but, but all animals will have spent a lot of time at grass. Mm. So, the, we, so the, the, the process here on this farm is taking animals that, that and you, uh, the animals that you see here as a mixture of steers and heifers, and, and they will all have travelled in the, in the past, uh, um, in the past maybe uh, f a week or 10 days, they've all been bought in livestock markets mm. somewhere in the west of Ireland. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that would be 200, 220 kilometres from here, would have bought in auctions, arrived here, and now they're on just a, a couple of days of, of, of uh, rest, and, and then they will be taken and vaccinated, uh, prepared, and then, then they will be housed. But these animals then will have, um, uh, you can see the wide variation in the breed. Uh, so the 80,000, uh, you know, that's the uh, number of registered uh, herd owners in, in Ireland. Now, they, they, to, to produce beef or to have your animals slaughtered, you'll have to have a herd number. So that doesn't mean that they're economic or anything, uh, but a lot of those are part-time farmers or, yeah. or maybe uh, uh, may produce some, graze some cattle. And they're pro primarily, uh, particularly these animals that you can see here would have come from some of those, some of those type of herds. Mm -hmm. um, uh, from all the myriad of, of range of, of, of breed, that you can see there, um, we have um, we have a national past. I mean, that is complicated uh, breeding, mm -hmm. but but we but it's very good breeding in many respects because we are looking for uh, in, in individual farms that uh, are well supported by uh, our National Cattle Breeding Federation. Uh, uh, they will guide them on on you know, best breed and best yeah. best crossing to do, and then then the data on all those animals are, 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 are is collected, yeah. and for a farm like this. 
uh, uh, the question was asked of me earlier, you know, which area is the best animal from? Mm. Uh, it, 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 you, you'll know that when they're slaughtered, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. but you will, you, 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 will, you, will, you will know because yeah. you can collect that data. All that data is, is collected. Because when we look at the animals here, uh, some of them look like a purebred Charolais, yeah, purebred yeah. Limousine, yeah. Angus, but yes. they are all crossbreds. All, all crossbreds, yeah. yes, and with the extent of, of, of what um, we see, uh, this, this lady here in front of us, then, you know, that, that probably is yeah. seven eighths yeah. Charolais. Um, and, and you mentioned the, the livestock markets. Yes. That, that's, a, that's an important part of, oh, of the is. culture. Oh, that is a huge cultural issue. And, and it, it's today, at any, um, you know, in, in any, any part of Ireland, you'll have a livestock market. Yeah. And a lot of livestock markets then are at night time. Uh, but particularly in in the, in, the, in the western part, the, you know, the good restaurants they'll have um, uh, they'll have plenty of, of um, you know people will you know 90% of the people that go there are not good there to buy cattle or to maybe have some food, meet the people, yeah. and have a social outing. So and as our as our age profile on a lot of the farms where where the beef cows are getting getting older, it's probably a, a, it's a, an, an excellent uh, area for for social interaction. There will be on on the livestock markets. They'll also have. Uh, veterinary suppliers will be supplying, yeah. you know, some of the products, so it, and it's yeah. an event. It's an event, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they are on, you know, the, uh, at, at, today in Ireland there's probably uh, I'm, I'm not sure the exact figure, but um, I'm thinking here as, as we stand and in the interview there's probably about 15 to 20 different livestock markets okay. functioning at yeah. the moment. Yeah. So you won't, um, and I know people that, that go to eight livestock markets a week, ah. uh, morning and, and <laughs> evening, uh, and will they buy cattle? They might buy. 10 and that, but, but then there's the professionals yeah, who yeah, are buying yeah. constantly, yes. And uh, Jerry, we are in Ireland, uh, we have talked about uh, how uh, good the land is for farming. Yeah, uh, yeah. There is a lot of farms in Ireland. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, but there is uh, not so many people living in Ireland. Yeah, we, we have a, a well, current um, last census was in, in the Republic, uh, li, li, uh, approximately five million. Yeah. But of that, now we remember we have uh, seven and a half million uh, cattle. So yeah. we have a, almost a two to one. Uh, when you add in the sheep, when you add in the um, uh, horses and everything else, it's, it, it is nearly three to one. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, look, it, it's a very important part of, of, of our economy. You know, up to up to um, 20 years ago, um, dairy and beef production, particularly beef, was th these were these were this is what drove our economy. Mm. Uh, where they were number one, uh, uh, number one and number two exports, uh, because again, it's almost in the mid mid 80 percent of, of all the milk that we produce is processed and, and exported yeah. uh, 84 percent of the beef that we produce 90 percent of the of the, uh, of the um, sheep meat we produce are all exported yeah. and, and where do all these products go yeah the well, main markets yeah the main markets for for beef is is our nearest uh, in this direction, the east, um, will be uh, Britain. Yeah. Uh, now they'll be specifically taking um, beef that, that comes from, from, the, from the dairy herd crossbreed, crossbreeds and good quality beef. Mm. It'll, it'll be, um, it's not, um, back 25 years ago, it was uh, uh, beef from the dairy herd was denigrated because it was probably just pure Holstein. Mm. But now the crossbreeding programs that are there and the, the, um, um, you know, every, every farm will be focused on, 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 on producing, um, when, they, when they produce enough replacement for the for the dairy herd, the rest of them will, 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 will be selecting animals with high index for for beef. Yeah. Uh, so that that that's where it'll be going, and that's all generally su <coughs> supermarkets in Britain. Mm. And those supermarkets, um, the, the the companies that are that are that dominate um, um, uh, slaughtering in Britain are Irish companies, yeah. and they they will know exactly. Uh, uh, they all have, have uh, uh, the biggest owners are, 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 are as I said, are Irish, um, and they'll know exactly what the market is, and they'll be processed in Ireland, pre-packed, uh, ready for ready for supermarkets. Mm. But our other markets then are, are, are uh, obviously the closest in Europe are, are, are going to be the Netherlands. Germany, they'll be mainly for steer beef, heavy steer beef, from mm. similar to what some of the steers that we see here. Yeah. Uh, and then Italy will be a big, big um, uh, recipient of, of, of um, typical of these animals here will be from uh, for heifer beef. Yeah. Heifer beef or limited amount of bull beef. But that's the biggest requirement that, that we have. So we're feeding specifically to meet those market yes, requirements. Yes, because I've heard the Italians, they want their meat 
uh, more pink, pink, uh, and uh, and, and the fat, fat must be white, be white. Yeah. Yeah. and a certain amount of fat. Yeah. Do, 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 do do like a certain amount of fat, and the Italians are eating their meat. You know what what slaughter what comes from these buildings here. Uh, they are slaughtered. Uh, you know, immediately after leaving here, they'll be in Italy in four, three to four days okay. and, and consumed very quickly. Yeah. Whereas uh, a lot of beef that's going to Britain will be need to be vacuum packed. It might be aged, and, and then some of the and that's particularly with the with the Angus and Hereford breeds. Yeah. Growing trend in Ireland then it'll be for Wagyu. You know, yeah. Wagyu crossing onto uh, particularly onto the dairy breed mm. because you know uh, uh, if, if if you cross it with any the, these breeds, uh, Charlie or the European French breeds, the marbling is much, much reduced. So, you know, so that's becoming a big market. Uh, we then have, the, you know, we, we do have some uh, beef exported to as far away as China. Yeah. Uh, and the Chinese have a very specific requirement on age and movements of the animals. It can be can be only on two farms in their lifetime, and, and, uh, and they're audited very strictly on that. Um, and, and it's high quality beef that's going there. Uh, but places like Singapore, Japan, Korea, starting off at the moment, yeah. uh, and we're di very diverse in that. But um, you know, and, uh, but currently we're, we're promoting uh, our grass fed. You know, mm. we, we we probably have missed out on that because because sixty percent of our animals will be slaughtered directly off pasture and now we're at the peak period of that mm -hmm. um, autumn will be our peak uh, slaughter and, uh, and you know weekly at the moment we're slaughtering 40,000 animals uh, our average across the year will be about 35,000 animals uh, so that equates to 1.7 1.8 million but so we have to be very focused on the market mm. we have to know where we're going yeah. uh, uh, margins on, on beef though are are a problem is that you know the most profitable enterprise in Ireland everybody wants to be in dairy production mm. the least profitable is yeah. is, is beef because uh, that's the next big thing in Ireland. Yeah. Milk and milk, dairy products. Milk, 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 yes. And yeah. if we go back to 2015, yep, yep. The, the EU quotas were abolished. Yes, yes, yes. What happened in Ireland then? Oh, everybody went crazy. Yeah? <laughs> everybody went crazy. Crazy from the point of view. Well, it was logical because the, 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 um, the milk processing companies um, supported by the government had um, you know, wanted to create more employment, they wanted to create more export opportunities. So, and there was a huge requirement for milk. Mm -hmm. um, and when we say our milk goes in many forms, powder, uh, powder for baby formula, for, for processing, for cheese, butter, and, and, and cream. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was a growing demand for, for, for milk. Uh, and particularly then under the model that we have in Ireland is a grass produced uh, um, product. And the, now that, that meant that the breed had to change uh, the type of cow that we, were, that we were using. They had to be better able to utilize pasture. Yeah. Um, and, and, and then, so now we have a very, very distinct, uh, you know, 90% of our cows, dairy cows, are, are calved in the springtime. Yeah. Those create a small little problem then is that we have all these calves in the springtime. Mm -hmm. So we have to find homes for those. Yeah. Whereas we do, and there's bigger restrictions on export. We did have a market for Spain. Netherlands into France with, with our veal type calves, mm -hmm. but now we're looking at, at, at those calves, retaining those in Ireland and bringing them through yeah. to, to uh, for yeah, having good integrated systems that, that will bring those profitably for the for the producers or the buyer of those calves. Because um, for previously dairy farmers are, were also beef farmers. Now no 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 dairy farmers or beef farmers to oh. sell everything. Yeah. And the milk goes Again, all over the world. Similar, all over the world. Similar, yeah, all, yeah, all yeah, over yeah. the world. Yes, yes. And yes. we've also talked about potatoes. Yes, potatoes. That's important in Ireland. Yeah, that of course, that's the emotive one. And you know, the prati is the potato. Uh, and yeah, and everybody, um, uh, everybody is, um, and this area particularly because we are, uh, you know, suitable, soils are suitable. But remember that, that we have, we now have, a, I think it's about 50,000 hectares of potatoes grown in Ireland. Mm. In 1845, we had, 300,000 hectares of, of potatoes have been grown because it was, it was the food of the, the staple food of the peasant population. Mm. And you know, uh, it, 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 we, we still have a motive connection to the potato uh, from the point of view that we, we realized when, when the potato failed in 1845, that's when we had a major potato famine. Yes. And that, with the great, the great hunger or the potato famine, mm. uh, Ochris Moor is, is, is an Irish. Um, and that, that's when we went from, you know, uh, when, I, when I said to you that I, um, in, 19, in the 70s, when I was uh, at school, we had uh, 3.2 million people. Now we have 5 million. Mm. But we always go back to in 1845 with 9 million people living yeah. in Ireland. You know, And so we had 
the, the great the great loss of of, uh, of, of a population uh, those uh, those that died of starvation those that emigrated yeah so uh, so that's that's the why the potato yeah, uh, yeah potatoes are are, are the, the, um, you know and uh, if, if if only we could plan I, I own 16 hectares myself I was thinking about potatoes this year and I said no no it's been two bad years in potatoes mm. but I, uh, uh, the potatoes now are um, almost 800 euros per, per, per ton there were only 200 uh, euros per ton last year because of two bad years so missed out on my opportunity yeah, to grow yeah, potatoes absolutely yeah so uh, all in all we've had lovely days here in Ireland yeah uh, it's been a pleasure to talk into yep. you Jerry okay. yeah uh, we are going uh, further south you're going south, yes. To yes. Uh, Dublin. Yes, and I can't um, uh, legislate for what you're going to get up to no. in Dublin, but uh, you're, you're, you're visiting one of our newest distilleries. That's another big development in Ireland, yes. is the number of distilleries that we've had. Our, our, our whiskey industry was very, very large up until our independence, um, and because of imposition of, of, of tariffs on Irish whiskey mm. after we became independent, uh, our, our the distilling industry and whiskey industry. But it's a very, very important issue for, that supports our, our our arable or tillage or yeah. our cereal production system. And it's, it's an system. important part of the Irish agriculture. Ab- absolutely, yes. It, yeah. it, it, both from from what, what um, the whiskey and then the byproducts. Yes. They're, they're very, and this farm again would be using some of the distillery byproducts, and and it makes you know it's a very integral part of what the, the feeding program that we have on the farm. Okay. Thank you, okay. Jerry. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for Thank your you time. Very, okay. Yeah. Hopefully that was. I didn't move. Yep. For dig som ser på detta här och är er intresserad i Irlands historia så är er den ganska spännande. Vi hörte här om den stora hungersnöden i 1845, skyltes att potetoavlingen fejlade. Väldigt intressant att läsa om det. Ta dig en tur till Irland, anbefales. Vi är er helt i finalen av turen vår till Irland. Det som är er fantastiskt fint när vi är er på tur, det är er att vi träffar nya folk och blir känt med massor spännande nya människor. Och vid sidan av mig här så sitter du Eivind. Ja. Uh, Eivind, han uh, kommer från Karmøy och på den turen här Eivind så har ju vi uh, blivit känt med lite uh, historia. Det är Arne. Eh uh, från vikingetiden. Uh, du bor på Karmøy. Ja. Og det är er ju en ganska sån historisk uh, plats i uh, i den sammanhang. Ja. Massa vikingefund som är er, som har dukat upp på på Karmøy men Hvor på Karmøy er det du uh, har gav, Eivind? Helt sør i Skudnes. Så langt sør og så langt vest i Norge en kan komme på Vestlandet nesten? Ja. ja. Og vi har reist uh, så langt vest vi kan i Europa. Vi er i Irland. Mm. At, uh, jeg har i alle fall hatt veldig fine dager her. Litt spent på din inntrykk fra turen. Jeg har kost meg, jeg. Ja. Det har vært mye å sitte. Ja. Og så har jeg hørt rykter om at du går og spekulerer på uh, litt grann på heimabane. Då är er lite tankar ja. så så vi vi ja. har den naturen här gett dig lite inspiration och ja. lite uh, ny input. Ja, egentligen. Ja. Jag har ju sett det mesta för dem men jag har alltid checkat och så det i drift. Ja. Det vi kan avslöja, det som du uh, går och spekulerar på, det är er mm. ju uh, nytt fjos ja. kanske. Uh, det är er det. Er både mjölk och kött kombinerat uh, mjölk och ammekur. Ja. Og eh, vi kommer jo garantert til å følge den saken der videre. Ja. Så vi kommer på heimabesøk. Det er bra. Det er veldig, veldig bra. Super. Og så her på denne siden så sitter du, Roy Erik. Ja. Eh, du er jo min gode venn og kollega i fjøssystemet her. Ja, ja. Og er jo den som har invitert med Eivind på tur. Hva område er det du eh, opererer i stort sett? Nei, i utgangspunktet så har jeg hele Haugalandet. Jeg har eh, stort fitcher av våra inne kvinnor inne i Sölldal. Så har jag har ett stort område. Och ditt ditt huvudfält är er storfe, är er det inte det? Du ska man storfe ja. Och så är er du bonde? Ja. Eh, kan du se si lite om vad du driver med ja. på hemmabanan? Driver gar på bioa, driver med mjölkekyr och driver med slaktegris. Man ska se si det. Ja, har gjort det sig 95. Travla dagar. Ja. Super. Eh, veldig kjekt å ha dere med på tur. Håper vi kan gjøre det igen. Eh, vi har vært i Irland. Eh, vi har smakt på masse god mat. Litt god eh, drikke. Nå har vi fått med oss litt lesestoff til flyturen hjem. Eh, anbefaler alle å melde seg på hvis de eh, lager tur igjen. Er ikke du ja. enig om det, Erik? Ja, ja. Eh, jeg er helt enig. Ja. Super. Vi ses. <laughs>